our top 10 Kickstarters of 2019. Thank you for joining us at Tantrum House Studio D. I'm Melissa Delp. And I'm Kevin Delp. I cannot believe it that this is our third year running that we've been doing this top 10 Kickstarter list. So there were a lot of awesome games on Kickstarter in 2019. Our list is going to only feature games that we previewed. Yes. So previews from Tantrum House Studio D. Number 10. Well, my number 10 is a race for the Chinese Zodiac from Capstone Games. Technically, it's simply complex, but it's just one of their imprints. This is a game for up to five players where you are one of the Zodiac animals, and they all have specific advantages on your turn. It's I mean, actually not on your turn. It's simultaneous mm -hmm. play. You're playing an action card and an energy card. Those action cards correspond to different spots in the wheel, and the energy cards determine what you're going to be doing because each of those spots um, have two different things going on depending on if it's a low energy or high energy. But if someone else goes to the same spot as you, plays that same kind of action, then those two energies combine together. So you're sort of like wondering what are you going to do on your <laughs> turn. I, I really like it. Yeah, I had a little trouble reading the other players. So usually what I thought was going to happen didn't quite happen. What's yours? So my number 10 is 100 Tori by Pencil First oh, yeah. Games. It's a tile placement game designed by Scott Caputo and Ed Baraf, and it has an Asian theme. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of going through the gates, the Tori, and you're laying tiles to match symbols, and there's a set collection aspect to the game. It's very beautiful. It's illustrated by Vincent Dutre, one of yep. Kevin's favorite artists. And I just really enjoy playing it. It's on the lighter side, and but still has some thinkiness to it with which tiles you lay and which characters you use the powers of. Yeah, this one almost made it into my top ten because <laughs> it's in Dutre. Yes, he's not just one of my favorite artists. He is my favorite artist. Number nine. My number nine is... Papillon. Papillon! It's the butterfly game. It's uh, designed by J.B. Howe and published by Colossal Games. It is a, another tile laying game. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> um, and trendy. also has some area control aspects. It has these 3D butterflies basically on little clothespins that you clip onto 3D cardboard flowers and at the end of the game there's some majority area majority scoring based on how many butterflies you have on the different flowers there's also scoring for your flower patches and meadows for the tiles that you lay um, again more of a light ish mm -hmm. maybe verging a little bit on the medium side light side of medium game i think the table presence on this one just mm -hmm. like really makes it an awesome game my number nine is actually it also has to do with area control area influence it is owari from thunder griff games this game has to do with placing tents and totems in different areas and you have to do that by playing different cards from your hand and one of the interesting things in the game is the the number of totems in the territories determine the number of tents that can be played in those ter in those regions and territories i just really find that intriguing how that all works in the game yeah, because there's definitely some working with your opponent, mm -hmm. sort of, but not really. You're trying to get the best thing there, but your things are adding together. Number eight. My number eight is High Rise. Whoa, no, it just doesn't fit on the screen here from Formal <laughs> Ferret Games. This is not the actual box size. This is a prototype. Prototype, yeah. Um, but uh, this is a city building game. And I love how the game works because it's this huge rondelle where you're going around the board and taking these different actions. One of the cool things is that when you go to different zones, you sort of have to pick what action you want to take in the actual zone um, because you can't take them all. 
So you have to choose which one's the best one, like collecting resources, constructing buildings, and repaying favors. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed this one too. It was really interesting how you're actually building up the the buildings, mm -hmm. making them high rises, and using the powers in cards. My number eight is Cosmic Ooh. Colonies, and guess what? It's another tile land mm -hmm. game. I, I'm sensing a theme here. <laughs> So this is designed by Scott Alms and published by Floodgate Games, mm -hmm. and it has card drafting and tile laying. Yes. One of the interesting things about the game is you have, I think it's four cards, mm -hmm. uh, several cards in your hand, and you're going to play two during the round. But the two cards that you play are going to be passed to the player on your left for the next round. So not only are you deciding which actions you want to take, but then you're going to be making those available to another player in the next round. And I think that's a very interesting aspect to the game. I think that's what also makes it interesting for me, that passing, what am I going to be giving the other person? And will they actually play it, or are they going to hold on to it for later, mm -hmm. and it will never get back to me again? Number seven. My number seven is Godspeed, Ooh. published by Pandasaurus Games, and this is not a tile laying game. <laughs> it's not a tile laying game. <laughs> it is workers placement with a little bit of bidding as well. Mm -hmm. An interesting part of the game is you have these tokens that represent different workers in your colony mm -hmm. and they each have a different value and a different job and you can use them in certain action spaces so i can't just put a random worker at any spot it has to go in the appropriate action but you're also using those tokens to bid for cards and basically turn order during the worker placement so not all of them are going to be available to you when you get to the worker placement part of the round. So it's really interesting trying to manage which actions do I want to take? Do I bid high and bank on getting those actions or do I bid low and have more options? I'm going to be silent on this because uh, you might see it higher on my mm, list. Interesting. <laughs> my number seven is Coloma from Final Frontier Games. This is a worker placement hand management game. One of the things I really like about the game is the simultaneous play where players are choosing where to go on the little uh, wheel the board on the board. And to, where you go, uh, really, it, it really is gonna, something's gonna happen because you're either gonna boom or bust depending on where other players are gonna go. Um, because I think it's the pe the the majority uh, go is, is bus basically. Right. So if more players go to one spot, then you're basically getting a, a less action. Right. Instead of being able to take both actions, yeah. you can only take the one main action if the area busts. Yeah, but there's there's more going on. There's a little map going where you're moving your caravan. You have your own player board where you're trying to build that up with bridges and things like that. So there's a lot going on in the game, but I think that middle section is what really sets it apart for me. Yeah, I like that you can take different paths and try to get points in different ways. You're not pigeonholed into only doing one strategy. Number six. My number six is Pret a Porter from Portal Games. This is a game for two to four players. It has worker placement. It's got set collection in it. You're basically in charge of a clothes company and you're trying to be the best clothes company that there can be. This is actually a revitalization of uh, Portal's Pret a Porter from nine years ago. Wow. So they've done a lot of uh, development since then and made it just a lot more streamlined, a lot better. Uh, there's you have to watch your PR, your trends. There's, uh, there's I just love how it, it works on the game board. The art is cool for Quan Chai Moria and other artists. So yeah, it was kickstarted uh, from Portal Games, and they did a really good job on that. And it's already reaching backers. So yeah. Who knew, fashionista Kevin? So my uh, number six is smartphone, and this is sort of an economic game you 
are the head of a phone company. There we go. You got two <laughs> fashion and phones. Phone, fashion and phones. Um, and it has an interesting action programming phase in the game where you have these tiles that you are overlaying and the symbols that you see will determine which actions you take or how powerful those actions will be in later phases of the game. So you really are programming the whole round in that planning stage and then uh, seeing how it all works out. You're developing technologies and you're building routes across the board and you're trying to sell your phones to the right markets. So there is a lot to think about, but I thought it was really interesting how it played. Yeah, I think Melissa won the first game we played. That the, probably helped. <laughs> the route building is really intriguing because, like she said, you can, uh, you're you trying to sell to different markets, and Melissa cornered the market, I think, in China. No one came to you know compete so with me, so yeah. I was getting all the payment there, which was very helpful. Number five. So for my number five, we're back to tile laying. <laughs> this is Copenhagen from Queen Games, and basically you are building the facades of the buildings in Copenhagen, and you're drafting tiles, and you're placing them onto your board. You're trying to get windows to complete rows and columns mm -hmm. and score bonus points, and their deluxe version comes with these acrylic tiles which are super sweet. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to sort of cheat and have another number five right now, and that's going to be the Copenhagen Roll and Write also. I do love Roll and Writes. I did a whole top ten with yes. Sarah about that. Um, and I enjoyed that game, too, where you're drafting dice and then drawing the uh, different Tetris poly Amino shapes onto your mat. I like both of them as well. I think I personally do like the roll and write version just a little bit better. My number five is One Small Step from Academy Games. This is a team based worker placement game. Mm -hmm. And you are either playing as the US or the USSR. This is interesting because we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, mm -hmm. so there's a little bit of history going on there and you're going after satellite missions or manned missions and you're trying to get resources for them so at the beginning of the game it's easier to do the satellite missions because they're easier to launch and then towards the uh, middle and end of the game you are trying you're going after those manned missions you're getting a lot more stuff and you're able to do those those missions but the cool thing is like i said it's team based so you're working with your team member and that has some Good things and bad things, but I think it's cool how you're cooperatively working together as a team against the other team. Right, because don't you each have specific types of workers? And mm -hmm. so if I go on a space with my type of worker, mm -hmm. it blocks you from mm -hmm. using yours, and they have different actions based on which type of worker you're using. Number four. My number four is a Kaon from Tabula Games. This is a two to five player resource management territory building with some engine building going on. You're a seeker trying to, to, to deploy your machines into different territories. You are trying to eradicate the infestation. You're exploring to collect resources. You have asymmetrical player powers. The Colossus is moving around this board and you're trying to be careful because you could get hurt from him, but you also want to go to him because he's got these shards on him that you're trying to pick up. I love this game. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I enjoyed the game. There were uh, lots of interesting decisions to make. Kevin, though, creamed us in our playthrough that we did of this, so I can see why you really enjoyed it, going after those shards. Yeah. My number four is Glenmore 2 Chronicles, oh, Chronicles yeah. from Fun Tales, mm -hmm. and this is a re-implementation of Glenmore with a bunch of little modules, mm -hmm. expansions, the Chronicles in it. And this is has tile laying. It does have tile laying in the it. Game. It does, it does, it's a small part. Yes. But. So it has tile laying. It has a rondelle action selection mechanic where you can go as far as you want, but you can't go backwards, so you're deciding which actions to skip and which ones to actually take. Whoever's farthest back on the time track gets to take oh, their yeah. turn yeah. action, so it has that mechanic in it. Um, there's a board that you're traveling around as well, 
and then the tiles that you're collecting and putting into your little Scottish clan mm -hmm. are going to score you points based on different aspects of those tiles. So I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It was a lot of fun and it had tiling. <laughs> I also enjoyed uh, Glenmore 2 Chronicles. I think the rondelle, I really mm -hmm. enjoyed that part. Number three. My number three is another tiling game. <laughs> it is, <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose, I just like them. It is Isle of Cats by City of Games. And this is a card drafting and tiling game. Okay. It has a fun, fantastical theme with mm -hmm. these sort of magical cats sure. that you're save, saving and you're putting onto your ship. And as you lay them in, on your ship, you're covering different spots. You're trying to cover rats. You're covering these uh, treasure chests or maps mm -hmm. that are going to give you bonuses. Yep. The cards, though, really are driving your actions and how many cats you can take and how you pay for them, and even your scoring is going to be uh, done by the cards that you collect. So I really like how the cards work because you have to decide which, not only which ones are you going to keep, but which actions can you do, which ones can you pay for, what are you trying to keep from other players, mm -hmm. which ones do you want to play as scoring goals. Some of them are private to you and some of them are open to the entire table so it's giving everyone scoring opportunities. I really enjoyed this one. Lots of interesting decisions to make in Isle of Cats. Well, one of the things I liked is that when you're pulling cats from the bag there's two different sides that you're that you're putting them from and then one side is I think a little cheaper of an option and then the other side is a little more expensive but you literally are randomly drawing them from the bag so one side could have pretty good tiles that you want and the other side might not or might want have the ones you want because you want the different like you were saying the different colors and all that kind of stuff so right lots of interesting polyomino shapes that you're trying to fit together and get certain colors together and cover certain spaces well mine is time of legends destinies this is a one to three player game from lucky duck games licensed from mythic games this is a story-driven, competitive adventure game set in the world of the Time of Legends, Joan of Arc, that Mythic Games have already created. What Lucky Duck Games did is they took that idea and they made this the story with a uh, companion app. And you are basically, have, have the app up and you have the board laid out, and or not the board, but tiles laid out, and you each have a character that has like sort of a secret objective and you're trying to complete that objective but you know you sort of know what you're trying to do but you don't really know how to do it or where to go at the beginning and you're interacting with things and you could go to the blacksmith and it, you could go there and it could be like what do you want to do you want and you could be like do you want to steal something do like do you want to talk to the blacksmith so you do have these moral decisions you do have some dice you can roll i do like that you can sort of increase your um your stats throughout the game and i like how that works because there's ways to getting multiple successes um in um, on your player board so that's pretty fun so yeah time of legends destinies i know you enjoyed yeah, it too. i i enjoyed it i i won yes <laughs> um so it come down to the end though <laughs> basically if you think of chronicles of crime yes. where you're scanning the qr codes but then more of a story driven mm -hmm. game that's what this is. So you have the QR codes that you interact with as you're scanning with your phone. Number two. Well, my number two you've seen before. Mm. Godspeed from Pandasaurus Games. Man, this box is just like packed. I know this is a prototype, <laughs> but there is a Heavy. lot packed into this game. One of the things, I'm not going to really explain it all again, mm. but one of the things I like is how you are moving up the tracks on the different uh, resources and um, how you do that is mainly by those cards at the different spots that you're going to and the each each spot has a deck of cards so there's like an exploration spot where you can get some exploration cards uh, there's a resource spot where you're trying to get like more resources there's there's just there's four different spots you can go to and they each have their advantages and maybe a little bit of disadvantages but mainly advantages of what track they're going to go up to go up 
and trying to find the right cards, I think, is one of the th one of the things I really love about Godspeed. Yeah, and those cards are buildings, so you have to have resources to then build those mm -hmm. buildings, and the benefits are often going up the tracks, which will score at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. My number two is Dwellings of Eldervale from Breaking Games, and this is kind of a huge, it looks epic, it looks like it's going to be this miniature battle game, mm -hmm. but it's not. No. It's a worker placement strategy game, oh, you yeah. have some hand management with your cards, there is a little bit of fighting, but if you go onto a space with someone else, you get to take the action first mm -hmm. before you fight. So even if you lose the fight and have to go off to Valhalla or wherever, you still got to do your action. It's not like you're losing your turn. Right. So I really liked that. There's a lot of thinkiness about which tiles to go on to take the actions, which cards to buy, how to build this engine. Mm -hmm. You have different types of units, different types of workers sure. that have different powers, and even those powers are asymmetric from player to player. Yeah. So my worker does something different than Kevin's worker, and my wizard has a different power than Kevin's wizard. And I thought it was really interesting. There are so many different um, factions that you can play, oh, and yeah. with the Kickstarter they unlocked a whole bunch more, but I just really enjoyed the thinkiness of it and how it didn't feel like a turn was ever wasted. Right. One of the things I liked about it is the different monsters. Mm -hmm. Of course, the sculpts are like super, super cool, but they all have different things that they're doing and not there's one, I think there's one good monster. In there. There's at least one or two yeah. that actually benefit you. Right. But you most of them, them are, of course, bad, but they're all bad in like how they attack or how where what's happening to them mm -hmm. and i think they're thematic too i remember like the one the vortex one mm -hmm. is like sucks people in and mm -hmm. stuff like that so i really like how the breaking news made those monsters thematic to what's going on in the game right and there's spell cards and different things i think i was able to tame a monster so then he was my little buddy and i could send oh, yeah. him after other people yeah. so it i i really really enjoyed dwellings of elder vale number, number one, one. So my number one is the Search for I knew Planet it. I knew X. It. I knew it. <laughs> this is from Foxtrot Games and it's designed by Ben Rossett and Matthew O'Malley. And I just love this game. It mm -hmm. is deduction yes. and logic, but yes, not logic. social deduction. Yes, logic There's no deduction. lying or manipulating people. Well, we it could is, totally lie, but... <laughs> it, it is pure deduction. <laughs> I know where the planet is. <laughs> <laughs> and I, don't I know where the planet is. Yeah, I, I really enjoy this game. It does use an app to tell you where things are. It randomizes the information and has specific rules for that game of where Planet X is and how things uh, interact with each other. Like this type of item is not next to this type, mm -hmm. or it's within several spaces and uh -huh. so you're using those different logic rules and guides to help you figure out where planet x is but then there's also some scoring where throughout the game you need to post these theories of what you think is in a specific section mm -hmm. and if you can do that correctly you're going to score points some are worth more than others you get points if you post the theory before other people, so it's not just about finding Planet X, but also finding things throughout the game. Yeah, it's definitely more than just a logic deduction puzzle. <laughs> I think Melissa really thrives on the logic deduction puzzle, but it's a game. <laughs> and I thrive on the game portion. Mm, he tries <laughs> to get into your mind. <laughs> yeah, so figure out what actions to take, when to take them, when to actually um, guess and place the, I think in Asteroids here, I'm not really sure, it's a 50-50 guess, I'm gonna take that risk and guess. And usually it play, pays out, sometimes it doesn't, but that helps me in the end, because Melissa said you're gonna score on how well you did, not just on finding Planet X. Right, and your actions take a different amount of time, mm -hmm. time units, so you have this time track, whoever's furthest back in the track takes their action. So if, you could take several actions in a row depending on which ones you take. Well, my number one is Sleeping Gods from Red Raven Games. This 
is a exploration game. You are on board a steamship. It's cooperative and your team is working together to find these totems and find out a lot of things uh, on these different islands. So you're actually in your your play the players are in charge of a team. So not everyone's sort of in charge of like just one person, which is kind of cool. I like I like that in the game that sort of everyone has access to the to the people on the steamship. So that's that's pretty cool. So you're trying to like I said find these totems. It's it's similar to games like Near and Far and Above and Below. You have the books where you're reading <laughs> And you're trying to you know, go through the story and things like that. But there's, and also, as you saw near and far, it has that Atlas book where you see the, like, the, the, the land, map. yeah, the yeah. map of the landscape, and you're moving the ship to the different spots. And the one other thing about this game is it's a campaign game. So I think that's just another thing that there's actually like a, a story progression. Sometimes you didn't see that as much in Near and Far or Above and Below. Like maybe you did see the little things here and there like the Red King in like Near and oh, Far. Oh, the Red King. Oh, the Red King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or you'll, you'll see some familiar things in those games, but there was no really progression of story. Whereas this, you see that a lot more. Well, this one, I think, is also much more open world. Oh, yeah. So near and far, you're progressing through map one, map two, map three, map mm -hmm. four, if you play the campaign of it. This one, you can basically go wherever you have access to. Yep. And so your story is going to be completely different mm -hmm. than another group story based on the decisions and th certain things are going to open up to you based mm -hmm. on the choices you make and certain things will never be available to you right. based on choices that yeah, you make. Yeah, I really like that. And the other thing I didn't mention is there's not really a time limit. It's not like, oh, I know when I'm done. I mean, you know when you're done the whole, like, finding the nine, I think it's nine totems, but you can be like, you know, we found a totem or we didn't find a totem yet, but you can just sort of log it in your captain's log and be like, you know, I played for an hour. I think we're good for now. Or, you know, we have a three hour time slot so you can you know, to spend that time doing that. So it's really up to your, um, your group, your play group. How long do you want to spend in each time playing Sleeping Guides? I think that's another benefit of the game. So yeah, Red Raven Games hit. Looking forward to this to coming out in 2020. So uh oh! I, I knew it's coming. I, I hear it. I have a few honorable mentions. All right. What are some of your honorable mentions? So, I have one. So one of them is an expansion. Yes, that's mine. I know oh. what it is. Is that also yours? Do you want me to leave it for you? No, we could just say okay. it together. So the expansion to Anachrony. Anachrony, yes. Fractures of Time. Fractures of Time. So I really enjoy Anachrony as a worker placement game. Has this interesting like time travel aspect. And the expansion brought a new board, some new materials, mm -hmm. the purple crystals, mm -hmm. and I thought... And the new it, miniatures, too. Yeah. Pretty cool. And I thought it was a really interesting addition to the game. So yeah. that's one of my honorable yeah. mentions. I agree with you. All right. Continue on. All right. My other two honorable mentions are games that I have played, but Studio D did not preview them. So break in the rules with the honorable mention. Wow. One of them is Calico, which is a tile laying game. <laughs> and this is one that Will and Sarah previewed. Yeah. Mentioning Will mm -hmm. and Sarah. Oh, they have their top Kickstarters from Studio 3. Their video is published, so you can take a look at theirs. I'll yeah, put it up there in the corner. Take there. a look at ours. See which one you like yeah, best. Yeah, which games you like let better. Let us know. <laughs> also, let us know what some of your favorite Kickstarters from 2019 were. Yeah. And then my other... Oh, yeah, I was going to say, don't you have another honorable mention before my we close this other honorable out? mention is a roll and write game. It is The Seven Bridges. Oh, yeah, Seven Bridges. Um, I never got to play that, but it looked it's, cool. It's a, it's a meaty roll and write, right? A lot of decisions to make, interesting scoring. You have to cross bridges and the number of bridges cool. that you cross determines what you, how many uh, of the different areas you can score. And really enjoyed that one, too. Well, like Melissa said, let us know what were some of your favorite or best Kickstarters from 2019 that you thought were the best, and uh, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear what those are, and as always, we'd love for you to subscribe to Tangent House and check out all our videos coming soon.